Michigan's rock station, Q106. Hey, I'm Q106's Terry Stevens. Capital City Comic Con is coming back to the Lansing Center in downtown Lansing, June 30th through July 2nd. Once again, it has a star-studded lineup of geek culture celebrities. We're going to be talking to them in the weeks leading up to the big show. Our guest this time around, he was featured in Face Off Season 8. Special effects artist, Rob Miller. Q106, what's your name? Where are you from? That's Robert Miller. I've um, called for the interview. Robert Miller, you're talking to Terry Stevens, man. How you doing today? Good. How you doing? I am surly and belligerent, but that's uh, more it has to do with my uh, upbringing than anything else. But, Rob, we are so looking forward to hanging with you and everybody else. Capital City Comic Con coming up June 30th through July 2nd. So let's dig into it, man. You are a Michigan native. Where are you from, dude? I'm from Monroe, Michigan. Okay, We won't hold that against you. I've been to Monroe. They haven't, they haven't kicked me out so far. <laughs> well, Monroe was known for uh, General Custer, and then... Uh, when he left to go to war, he said, don't do nothing until he gets back, and we're still waiting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, well, maybe we can get a zombified version of uh, General Custer out of your shop there. Cause, dude, so I'm browsing, through, I'm browsing through your work. You do some incredible stuff, man. So, so Rob, how did you get started in, in, in your monster factory that you got going on here? Well, it started back when I was probably early on watching Star Wars as a young kid, collecting toys and whatever toys they didn't make. I decided to make them myself with clay or plumber's putty or whatnot, and pretty much I'm self-taught. I never went to school till later on to get some um, technical things tightened up, but other than that, it's, I'm pretty much self-taught. But it started at an early age uh, doing uh, early sculpting, and then it moved on to... Um, a friend of mine was going to film school and he was wanting to do some small shorts and stuff. So I just basically taught myself special effects and watching old horror movies growing up through that and sci-fi movies and basically pausing everything and trying to figure out how things are done. And basically that's how it came about. And, um, that's where it all started. That's that's rad, man. So at this point now, I'm, I'm I've looked at your bio, and I mean these things are updated sporadically at best. Are you still an automotive sculptor at the Ford Motor Company Product Development Center? I I I've actually moved to a different position. I'm actually in the 3D printing area. We're making uh, prototype parts for uh, market research. So what we do is I I went to school for automotive design. I did uh, sculpt cars for years, but now that I'm in the 3D, uh, now that the technology is moving on and getting more advanced, we're doing more 3D uh, rendering and uh, 3D production. So what we do is we make um, uh, like prototype parts and then we test them and then see we send them out for more blind market research and then we get the um consumers input on it then it comes back to us and we make what changes have to be done or if they like it we keep it if they there's things that they didn't like we try to figure out what to do to change them to make them better so that's what i'm doing now i'm just uh doing uh prototyping and uh working on uh, getting the future out there for ford Awesome. Very cool. And is the future going to include like any, you know, zombie parts or anything like that? My new F-150 <laughs> Lightning? No. <it's laughs> a lot of it's electric. So it is going to be some shocking, uh, new parts for the Ford. But other than that, I, that's about the, uh, the most when it comes to anything scary. I love it. I love it. So, uh, Rob, <laughs> now, Rob, you were prominently featured in season eight of the show Face Off. How'd you get connected with that reality show, man? Um, I was a fan of the show, my family, you know, you know, cause, being part of the makeup field and doing that as a hobby, you know, that when you, there's a show on that's right there, what you're doing, you really fall in love with it. So as, you know, growing up with my kids and stuff, they see what I do at home and then they like the show. So we started watching as a family. And uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, Dan Phillips, was on season six. And I just got to the point where I'm like, you know, what's the worst? If I try out or I audition, what's the worst they're going to say is no. So, um, it was my daughter, my youngest daughter, Riley, uh, she has uh, down syndrome and it was kind of a unique, um, situation where we were watching it one day and she went and grabbed one of my masks that I made and she brought it up and pointed to the TV and she understood what I did was the same thing that they're doing on TV. And I knew right then that she was telling me that I should do this, you know, try out. So I did, I applied, I found out what I needed to do to apply and, uh, I wound up uh, 
getting accepted, and it was like I went out to. They were really impressed with what I could do, and they liked my story, and um, they liked the situation that I was self-taught, and I came from, you know, a humble upbringing, and pretty much uh, I'm a family man, and um, kind of doing it for my kids, and uh, so. Um, I did a interview over Skype and had to do makeup on myself, which is hard because I wear glasses. I'm blind as a bat without glasses. So I'm trying to perform all these makeup techniques on myself, being not being able to see and trying to perform it to where it's, you know, this is going to get me a chance to be on a television show. Right, right. So uh, I did that and I passed that class or that, that, that interview part. And uh, they flew me out to California, and then they did a uh, a two-hour makeup on myself in front of the producers and uh, makeup judges and that. And then, uh, which was interesting, they gave us two hours. They told me that, uh, I don't know if it's changed, but as of when I did it, that was the fastest makeup. I did it in 45 minutes. Oh, wow. So I was able to do a complete makeup on myself. And they also told me that, I was the first person to do two cohesive pieces that worked on my first uh, interview to my second so that they were in the same kind of genre of uh, the uh, storyline. I had a storyline all set up from the characters that I made from my own makeup, and they said I was the first one to do that. So that was kind of cool that I, that happened. But then uh, I got the call and said that I made the show, and they flew me out to California, and that's where it all started. Rest is history. Hell yeah, man. Very yeah. cool. So um, you mentioned earlier that, you know, you spent a lot of time watching, like, you know, sci-fi and, uh, and, and fantasy stuff growing up. And, I mean, when you spend a lot of time with that, you're, you're bound to see a B-movie that's got some questionable special effects at best, right? Is there a movie or show that you would love to take a crack at to bring it up to what it could have been under your watchful eye? Um, I was always a fan of early, like, um, just B slasher films, um, like um, the... A silent films I grew I was really a big fan of like Nosferatu and uh the cabinet of Dr. Calgary. I would like to take something like a silent film, old, old silent film and bring it to something now to where as you have that silent error kind of idea but brought it to the modern age. I think that would be a really cool because there's there's a lot of things that they haven't done i know recently they're going to be doing a nosferatu film coming out in the future but there's a lot of good silent films out there that a lot of people don't know of um there's actually one film the uh london after midnight um lon cheney that uh actually it's never been it's been seen in a few um situations but there was a big fire and it was lost and there's no copies of it ever so i would like to see something like that be brought you know to the future brought to the of light nowadays to where we could see something like that come to um movies right now and with the age of that stuff i mean the copyrights and trademarks have to be they, they got to be public domain soon we're running out a of, lot of right yeah, we're running of out of excuses for it not to happen <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm surprised that, you know, they, they keep remaking all these, you know, films, but there's so many good um, silent films and early, you know, early, early films. They call them talkies when they started doing sound, but early um, horror films that are fantastic, have a great storyline, but, you know, they were made so long ago that they didn't have the technology that we have today, and it would really, really be something to see some of those older movies brought forth today. So when you show up at Capital City Comic Con, digging into your stuff here, you have done like some live demos and that sort of thing. Are you going to be doing some of that at the Lansing Center at the end of the month? Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, I uh, not to bring this uh, interview to a you know a downer, but I've had a lot of health issues this year, and I've been kind of getting back on my feet, and it's been a, it's been a rough couple years for me. And I've had a lot of major um, health things. And this is really the first show that I'm doing. I had to cancel a lot of shows just for health reasons. And oh, I had to man. concentrate on taking care of myself before I did. And it's like now I'm finally feeling better getting back in the studio. So I'm slow moving. I'm I'm having some, you know, some hard things and trying to get uh, – um, 
you know, trying to get uh, back on my feet. So I, I'll have to see you if, but I do have a lot of um, uh, new material that I'm bringing to the show. I've, I have uh, something I'm unveiling at this show that's going to be really neat for the kids. So that'll be um, something to see. Very cool. Um, well, we want you to be healthy. We want you to be healthy because there's yeah. something there's something else I discovered when I was doing my prep for this interview. Um, now, there, when you search Rob Miller art, there's a few characters that show up. Do you have any kind of a rivalry or feud with Rob Miller fine art? Because you guys are operating in two completely different mediums. <laughs> yeah, I see that he's a of of what is he uh, he does um, like wildlife and. Uh, um, very pastoral for, uh, and serene yeah. yes <laughs> yeah no i haven't ran, we haven't had any feuds yet no battles in uh thunderdome or nothing like that so we're <laughs> we're doing okay well, that's awesome well rob hey man you rest up you do what you got to do and uh we will see you june 30th through july 2nd lansing center in downtown lansing capital city comic-con have you been to this one before have, have you visited oh. lansing before yes yes this is i did it uh three years now in the row so this is a great show they they got a great team out there brian tim put on a great show and uh it's uh it's it's a if you've never been it's probably one of the best shows in michigan hell yeah absolutely rob thank you so much for uh checking in with us man we'll see you in a few weeks in downtown lansing be well dude all right thank you bye michigan's rock station q 106